The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman. Good to be back on this Tuesday, the 12th of uh, September. And welcome back also to our TFNN family. Thank goodness everyone's safe. I believe Steve Rhodes is uh, having a difficult time getting the Internet, but uh, hopefully that will be resolved very soon. And uh, let's go to the numbers. Dow's at 56 at 22,113. Now, this is going to be really interesting because in the patterns that we're looking at, let me start off with the E-mini just to show you. Look, there was an arch formation. That arch formation became a cup formation, breaking to a new all-time high. This is the September contract. I, I've done the uh, Z, that's the December contract, but I'm, I just want to deal with this. It's got the most information on and this I'm calling leg C to the upside, no, no alternative count, leg C, <clears throat> and also Chapman Wave 5 up is unfolding. We haven't yet started four, so this can go higher. The, the weekly chart broke out to a new high. have to consider this is either a G or a B. My thinking here is that I don't want to, I want to keep the alternate count just a little longer because the MACD hasn't crossed positive and stochastic hasn't, is at 72%, needs to go higher in the weekly chart. Daily chart is still very strong. So in the 120-minute chart, it's just a little toppy right here, peak D, it's made. So let's get out of this, and I'll show you the parameters that we're looking at in the Dow, et cetera. So let's go INDU. This is the Dow chart. So what I've done, I've done it in a little greater detail for my subscribers, is that I was expecting in the Dow 120-minute chart today a leg D. The powerful move from an arch formation that broke out to a cup formation forced me, well, thank goodness on Friday we were stopped out, uh, what did it say, Tuesday, on Monday we were stopped out for a 1.7%, I believe, loss on a small position short on the Dow. And as I had said before, we are mostly, in, actually we were almost solely in long positions Really a big mystery to me that so many stocks were actually looking quite good. Um, and at the same time, the Dow technicals were at that point on Friday, uh, on Friday weakening, and so, were the, so was the S&P and the QQQ. So that reversal yesterday wasn't just short covering. I think there was actual buying. This is the way I interpret it. And that says to me, I have to call this a blue C. This is not an alternate count. This I'm calling at this point is a leg C in the daily. Until the Dow goes above 22,179, uh, we are under the previous high of the 8th of August. But everything about this, look at the MACD and stochastic, how strong they are. So this is leg D in the 120-minute chart. This is the daily chart on the left. And what I'm suggesting <clears throat> is that because of the strength, uh, where did it go? Because of the strength that there should be some kind of a pullback starting a little later today, maybe going into doji type Wednesday, small candle Wednesday, maybe pulling back Thursday, or maybe even pulling back tomorrow. And then we should start leg D. How leg D in the Dow unfolds is going to be absolutely important. So let me give you all the numbers, then we can go through all these little technical details. Um, the Dow right now up 57, having hit uh, 22,100, and I think it was... Oh, 22,000. Is that a three? No, that's a 134. I was just going to say, what did I miss? 22,134. It had 40 points, to, 43 points to go, 45 points to go to, to hit that old high. I think it will still do that. Um, the MAGD has crossed positive. Days young, but it's crossed positive. And stochastic is running on balance volume is very strong. The weekly I've got is a peak D and a five in the, in the Chapman wave. The MACD and stochastic were pulling back, but price is the arbiter of a trend. And what I'm looking for here is that if it goes up not just 22,183 and then pulls back, that has potential double top connotations. But if the Dow this week actually goes into 22,200, 
270s. You remember on Friday I said Dow above 22,055. I actually in the interview with Tom the, uh, on Thursday, I said if the Dow goes below 21,600, that is going to be very negative the way I see it. But if it goes above 22,055, I'm just going to have to consider that the up move has been uh, regenerated, and that's exactly what happened. It went to 22,057. So this is going to be very important. One of the parameters, key support at 22,050 to 22,000, uh, let me say 21,950 in, in the shorter term, but a close above that 22,179 and then going decisively above it into the mid or low 22,200, 22,222 would be a nice number. I would say that that's a regeneration of the upside move. Um, so we switched from the short side to the long side. As I say, we've got a number of long positions all over the show, actually, not just categorized by stocks, but indexes, etc. cetera. Um, sorry, sectors, etc. So let's go to the S&P, SPX. And unless there's a very sharp reversal today of about 150 points, I think that we will be going higher. 150 point close down. I have to say, you know what? That was an aberration yesterday. Meantime, S&P, new leg C to the upside, should still go to a D. This is a very positive, all-time high. Dow's lagging. S&P is at an all-time high. And the Q, the um, monthly chart has just extended leg D. Weekly chart is an F slash B. Isn't that interesting? Wow. Uh, QQQ series, here we go. QQ, QQQ, don't type it on the chart. Type it in that little box over there. Okay, QQQ hasn't made a new high. It's kind of stalling here. In fact, it's it's lagging. The IBB is pulling back. That's the Biotex and the SMHs. We'll get to that in a minute. But let me just check it out. Yeah, so this is going to be very interesting. Uh, the Qs were leaders before, but you see what's going on here. Look, Apple comes out in about another 45 minutes with a new product. I, I think there's going to be a little problem with the product. But I wouldn't be shorting it right at this moment. I'd actually wait for it to define. I'd rather get a market short than just a single stock short at this particular moment. So 164.94 on the 1st of September, all-time high leg C in the monthly. That means that the outlook longer term is still very positive. Shorter term, watch 156. A close below 156 says Apple's going to take a little time out. Look at Google. Um, Google is really struggling. It's down $1.36. Look at Amazon. Amazon trading right now up 2.50. Look, it's way down in the lower part of this trading range between 1,083 and the low recently of um, just under 940, trading at 980. Struggling. Uh, so I've been suggesting for a while that those very great high techs that led us up are going to have a pullback and we might see through the rotational correction. After all, look at the XLF. Um, X, oh, beautiful move, up 0.29, up 1.18%. We actually went longer bank stock this morning. Um, I just thought, I'm thinking interest rates are going to uh, pull back here. The TLT has made a peak D with this move down, but until it, it's 126.68, down 78 cents. Until it breaks 126 support, I have to consider, could still go to a higher high, but I'm thinking it is a peak D at 129.57, and we'll get to gold in a minute because I think the dollar is going to rally some as gold and yields. Gold pulls back and TLT pulls back. Bonds pull back. I'll be right back. Dow's up 60. If you're looking to open your portfolio to a world of opportunity, consider the new market safe emerging currency CD from Everbank. This three year US dollar denominated CD gives you exposure to five equally weighted currencies from Brazil, China, India, Indonesia, and Turkey at a time when experts see great potential for global growth. Even better, it features a 7.0 leverage factor, which means you could earn a potential market upside payment of seven times the CD's performance at maturity with no cap if the currencies increase in value over the CD's term. And should the opposite occur, your principal is 100% protected. Keep in mind, returns are based on CD performance. There is no annual percentage yield or periodic rate of interest on this index CD. Don't miss out. The September 28th funding deadline will be here before you know it. So call 1-855-750-4051 or visit everbank.com slash TFNN for the CD's term sheet and other important product details and disclosures. This advertisement is sponsored content. Everbank is a division of TIAA, FSB, member FDIC. 
Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Basil takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. I have a question about when Apple makes a statement. I think they said it at 1 o'clock. Um, uh, that's what I've heard. Anyway, so let's get back to our, our story here. What we're looking at is um, the Dow's now up 63. What I'd say to subscribers to my opening call, one of the reasons why we added longs and that we uh, decided not to take a particular short that we were going to short uh, uh, over the last two days is <clears throat> I think there's a residual, enough residual strength and there's still enough potential for short covering because I, I think I didn't, there was just disbelief yesterday. But I do believe that there are buyers and the buyers are, in fact, um, looking at sectors, let me show you what I'm thinking. I've got RRC here. I was asked about that. This is range resources. Yeah, this is a great candle. It's 1827. And I'm just going to suggest that um, uh, if you're long, uh, Julie wanted to know about it. I'm just going to say that if you're looking to go long, right here is the, is the place at 1826. And I would put a stop. I'd have to give it a point and a half. So 10 percent. No, 10 percent. That would be. One percent. Sorry, I didn't mean ten. I'm busy looking at the. Yeah, make a stop under seventeen, just for today, because by tomorrow it pulls back only fractionally and then moves higher. You could raise that stop a little bit, and I would raise the stop until <clears throat> this proves that it's breaking decisively into the body of this candle of the second of August, with a high of 1981. Gaps down, huge ugly candle, 1981. Low of 1768, so that if this thing can get into RRC, trading at 1827 up $1.30, if it can get into the seven, no, 17, I'm not interested in 17s. Really, it has to go into the 19.05 area. Shouldn't be a big deal if this is going to be really working. If it can do that, then all of a sudden the weekly chart for the very first time is going to see everything crossing positive. Monthly chart looks horrible. So it has to be the daily that leads the way. <clears throat> if you don't get back to me and it's doing well, if it closes above 20.23, the gap low of the first, you fill the gap and it's going to go quite a lot higher. And this could be a significant low in the short to maybe even intermediate term. I don't know about long term. <clears throat> Range resources. Next question I had was, yeah, so I, I, a couple of people had mentioned, and, and I, you know, I'm. It's a mea culpa situation. I just, I didn't. There's no excuse. 
When once the Dow crossed positive along, above the nine period exponential moving average in the weekly, I should have just said, you know what? We're going to take an intermediate term long position. <clears throat> And we're going to hold that position until there's a decisive close, a decisive, not just a one week, but a decisive close below the nine period exponential moving average now, which is at 21.825. <clears throat> Could have done that very easily uh, in the 20,600s, mm, 20,000, right there, 800 area. And I just kept thinking, no, it's, uh, it's going to be, look at the MACD stochastic. But in fact, it was doing the right thing. And it's, it's all part of um, the process that says price is the arbiter of a trend. The technicals can be your friend, but there are times when they diverge and price is really the essence. If the price is holding, and the technicals are going to follow at some point. And then if the technicals follow as it breaks out to new highs or whatever, a new recovery high or an important high, all of a sudden, you've got the technical strengthening as it's breaking out. That's like, you know, if any of you have surfed, you know those waves that come, and as they break, you've got to time the surf. I, I, I don't surf board. I use a body surf, and I haven't done it for a while. So I'm talking history. But you know how you time it? You can just get it right, and the wave just takes you along. Sometimes you get that double wave. The double wave you suspect is going to actually <clears throat> take you even further. But the power of that overlapping wave can slow things down. So sometimes what you're looking at here is that as the MACD finally crosses positive and the stochastic, if it's going to cross into the upper 80 percent area or higher after being lower, that gives that extra supercharge, that power to at least attempt to break the previous left side high. And that's where we are right now. Could it double top? Absolutely. Did we want to be long? Yes, we want to be long because I think that the bias right now, just on a period, because the technicals are catching up, that's why I felt strongly that subscribers, we, we had to switch positions and made a little bit bigger position. And if we got it right, at least we've got a bit of a cushion. So 1% or less risk. And you've got yourself at least the potential for a 2% gain. And then other things can happen. It could extend or it could turn down. So that's just the way I'm looking at it. Now, let's go on because I wanted to show you what's happened here with gold. Not breaking down. It's down four. It was down much more earlier. But it has made a doji candle peak E. It has got this trend, a Chapman wave inside track repellent zone that it got repelled from. The MACD is turning down, but it hasn't turned negative. Stochastic still at 80%, but it hasn't gone under 80%, so that's still a positive. And the on-balance volume is still strong, but it has turned down. So this is just, it's almost like a test of um, strength. However, we had a peak C1, C2, C3, and yet, yet again, <clears throat> my fault, Price was the arbiter of the trend. I didn't want to believe it because the stochastic and MACD were pulling back. But no, no, no. <clears throat> the gold was acting very well. <clears throat> Still acting well on the weekly chart. MACD's at nine. Uh, MACD's ex expanded. Um, the the stochastic histogram is very positive. The stochastic's at 91%. Um, sorry, the MACD's histogram is very positive. Stochastic is positive. RSI is positive. Relative strength index is good, but not great. And I'm looking at this and the unbalanced volume is just turning down, but still very strong. So I'm suggesting that what we're looking at here, and I'll do silver as well, because silver is a catapult. catapult. Sometimes it lags and zoop, it catches up. Sometimes it leaves and then pulls back. So let's go to silver SI. Right now, silver is down <clears throat> 0.017. Also a peak E with doji candle. I'm looking at this and I'm saying, I'm just calling this a consolidation. During this consolidation, and for gold, well, first of all, we're on silver. So silver has 17.50 to 17.31 as key support zone. A breakout to a new all-time high takes it, will probably take it to 18.50. I just don't see that yet. And gold parameters, at least at this point, um, are, uh, let's see, 1345 is the 1330. 1345 says, you know what, we're just, we're hanging out to the top. It's a high-level consolidation. 1322 or lower says, nah, we're not having a high level consolidation in the daily. It'll turn out to be so in the weekly, but the daily needs more time and price. So just keep it simple. 
And if you're looking at the dollar, the dollar's up a little bit. The dollar's down a little bit. Down 0.08. Had a nice candle yesterday. Um, I'm suspecting that this is a move that is really just a counter trend rally. If you look at the USD, JPY, the United States, the dollar and the Japanese yen, look at that strong move. This is a this is a leg A, still a gray leg A, but it's very strong. And at one point at 110.15, if it's able to cross into the 110.90s in the next three days, that'll be very good. If it needs a day of pullback to the 109. 60s, okay, but I, I would like to see, I would actually like to see it rally some. I think it, it, it deserves a break. And if you look at the EUR, USD, the Euro dollar currency pair, it's pulling back. And that's saying to me, you know what? I think dollar and euro pull back, do, the gold and the dollar, sorry, dollar and euro pull back. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the Taz Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and forex. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner Plus right at TFNN.com. And when you sign up, you gain instant access to John Logan. Logan's most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profile So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free. For more information on the Taz Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, so the Dow's up 60, S&P's up 5.97. Um, now, um, and I question about SWN, Southwestern Energy, doing very well. And something's going on here. The weekly chart has improved. The daily chart is in E slash A, having made a peak T and a sharp drop. The monthly chart is horrible, but it has got the arch pattern that can change. But what I am thinking is that I'm not sure if you're long. What was the question again? Who, 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 who? Are, oh, in the dead. Yeah, if you're interested in this, then this is the kind of stock that is the longer term. Uh, maybe you could get a better price, 582 right now, SWN up 41 cents, big move up. But I would suggest that you start your position right here. 
And then you either have to wait to, to bounce up a little bit, or you can uh, do this. You could um, put in another bid at 563. Uh, that's the way I would look at it. All right, let's go to Greg in Austin, Texas. Greg, how did you survive? Oh, uh, very well, thank you. Um, Good. Yeah, so but thoughts are with the folks in Florida. That's, that's tough. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah. Yep. So you'd like to look at um, GNW, Genworth okay. Financial. Okay, Genworth Financial. So this is a stock that got well. It didn't really go clobbered. It got clobbered previously. There was a stock that was once up in the uh, teens, uh, pulls back to under two and trading <laughs> now at three ninety seven. So the big question is, did they? Is this a situation where? They are not going to see the kind of this is insurance, right? And it's, but it's also it's life insurance, right? And so this is very interesting. Um, I, it's not damage your home damage or anything like that. Isn't this just life, or is it a mix? I, I honestly I, I don't know. I just got in this morning, and I was wondering if you could give me a wave count for the 120. Okay, let's go. Oh, the 120, <laughs> actually, that should be, oh, this is very interesting. So the, uh, the 120 had two starts. So let me just show you what mm -hmm. I'm looking at here. So the low that was made, was that a double bottom low? Let me just check. So the low, I'm going to open this so that we, we got the objective in the Chapman Wave is to always look for the lowest, most obvious low bar. So that was an A to a B to a C to a D. Okay, let me just do this real quickly. Uh, there's the arrow for the lowest, most identifiable low bar. Here is the A. Then it restarts to another A right there. Then it goes to a B and a C and a D. So that's one. Now it goes A, B, A, B, C. Oh, boy, that's a little tricky. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to call this... Um, Okay, I'm calling this a D right now. So I got a couple of ways to look at it, and all the ways that I look at it uh, make a D. When you get a double bottom with the exact price low, in this case, 336 at 1130 on the 7th of September, 336 on the um, on the 7th of September at 1330, I tend to, especially when it's above the previous major low of 333, which was made uh, at 1130 mm -hmm. on the 22nd, I'm inclined to immediately call that a brand new peak A, even though technically it would be one further on because you need to make a trough. But we've already right. made the trough at the low before. Yeah. So I'm calling this ABC. Just to be safe, the MACD is very strong, but a little extended. Stochastic is really good at 85, and the on-balance volume is extended. So I'm calling it D. What price did you get in at? Uh, I mean, look, I... Well, it was probably somewhere around 381. 375. Oh, almost the low of the day. Very good. So you at 375, you got yourself a 20, uh, 23 point, uh, 23 cent, um, some kind of a margin there. So now on the right. daily, this is what I wanted to say immediately when I was looking at it. I thought, isn't that interesting? It made its low back at the beginning of August, and it went through this whole this, this turmoil over the last week. It didn't go down to a lower low, and now it's trading at 397. I'm just off the top of my head. I'm trying to think of what I read about it recently, and if my memory serves me well, it wasn't a very positive thing. And I'm chuckling to myself, saying, "Wow, how did I mean? Uh, how did they know that it was going to come down like this?" But in fact, it's come down very sharp, even in just the past few months. It's come from the fives down yeah. to the low that it made it at about 3.30. So I think that you, the way it's double bottomed here, there's a ch there is just a chance that you have got in quite perfectly in the sense that if over the next week it does not break below, actually 3.74 is the 200-period is the exponential moving average, and right. just a little higher at about 3.78 is the 200-period simple moving average. So it's got a lot of cushion. Now, some of this is emotional, so we, we've got to look at it very practically. And some of it is just pure relief that um, it's not, uh, the perception is it won't get hit all that badly. So I'm saying to myself, if this is an H pattern, even if it's going to go to from a lowercase h to a lowercase m, 
it should still, based on the technicals, break at least a little bit above 4.23. That was the high of the week of the 14th of April. Yes, my, that, this is a plan that I would set up if I was in it and I was fortunate enough to get it in at the low price that you did. I would say, as long as I can keep my core position, I'm going to watch a smaller position. I probably don't want to even exit it because it's trading at $3.98. Because it has the potential, if everything works by September, October, by the end of September, to be closer to 450 than 350 if this week it's able to close anywhere above 375, I'm saying to you, okay. normally I'd have a little nibbling again, nibbling again. I'm just going to say to you, keep this. If it pulls back to 382 to 385 in the next two days and it, it refuses to hold, it keeps bouncing off that level, it keeps trying to go back to the 387, 391 area. I would add another small position, and that's the position I'd use as a trading position. And let's okay. see, it's, it looks like it's going to take time to get to leg D if the pattern that it's, it's made of holding, breaking to the upside, holding, breaking to the upside. So if it does it very quickly, that's you might not even have a chance to add to it. But I would think of trying to keep the call, trying to add another position, and only trade that other position as long to try as much as possible to keep this as a core position. And by that, okay. I mean, I wouldn't take, I probably would say, I wouldn't take a loss. If you're in the 375, it's not really worth it because if it breaks no. under 370, it's going back down again. But boy, if it holds, this is one that I would start to think of adding to only because it has the, the sexiness of being involved in a high level uh, um, headline news event. And now the headline news event is sort of fading. It's almost like the VIX index is breaking down. In this case, is the, that would be the hurricane breaking down. In this case, the result is that your stock, an insurance type stock, is running very strongly. Treat it as, treat it as a potential three-week trade. And if it can go longer, that'll be fantastic. Great. Thank you so much. And thank you for calling, and congratulations. Hey, That's a nice entry. Unless I missed it, um, would you... Uh, cover crude, and um, I'll just hang up and listen. Okay, I was about to do that, and I, then I forgot about awesome. it. It was on my list. So crude trading right now, up 15 Thank cents at 48.21. So do you want to hold on, or that's it? Okay. Um, I'm not sure if Greg's on. I will cover crude because it was on my list, and I just never got to it. I'll get to it, and then a bunch of, already a good bunch of questions I will get to, including Home Depot, Caterpillar, IWM, the VIX index. That's the... Uh, XNG. Hmm, I'm speaking of XNG. Basil Chaffin, Tiger Edition. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will 
will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE -E or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Hi, folks. So let's go to USO. USO is the United States Oil Fund. Trading right now at 9.85 up three cents. This is the area, and so I was asked about falling axe methods and one of the Chapman Wave methodologies where you got a series of lower highs and much lower lows. Eventually, that open, that that expanding cone formation, declining cone formation, breaks to the upside or downside, but it breaks to the upside. What happens as it breaks to the upside? What are we looking for? Well, first, I look at the big, the longer picture, which is that the tide of the monthly is really horrible. A lot has to happen. It's at 9.85. Nothing serious on the upside will, will really occur until you can get to about the 12.50 area. It's a long way to go. The weekly chart is improving. MACD is good. Stochastic's at 61% trying to rally. So it's holding quite nicely. But until, and it's unfortunate to say, but until crude oil can get to, or when I say unfortunate to say, what I mean is that we've tried, it's tried before to break the upside resistance. I'm calling this green right now. And what you really need to see for the Chapman Wave falling X formation is to see a punch to the upside. In this case, probably has to go above peak B to start leg C. Uh, it would be at 10.33, 50 cents uh, from here. Uh, and then when any pullback occurs, this former resistance line has to become support. And that's what we're looking for. Can it do it? Well, look at the daily chart. The daily chart is really struggling. It's had an opportunity. It's gone to a peak C minus. Now it's gone to a peak B minus. And it's just working very hard. It's not breaking down because it's not under 9.38, the, the previous low. Um, but it hasn't broken to the 10 point. It really has to go above this candle right here. 10.09 on the daily to get to 10.10. 10 .10. And then all of a sudden, the 200 period exponential moving average, which I believe is going to become a magnet for the shorter term. Uh, it's a, no, if it breaks 10.12, then it should become a magnet. But then it could be a barrier as well. That's what it's done previously. So this is the falling axis resistance line right here. I'm going to raise it just a tad. And then I would say to you, make it quite simple that at, in the 10.12 area, that's positive. Nancy and stochastic are kind of good. So what am I looking at in crude oil? I'm looking at a situation that says there's a lot of resistance. I, I think I mentioned last week, I don't see it breaking out. I don't see it breaking down. Now, um, it is part of one of the commodity indexes, one that we own. And that index is, has done quite nicely. I did fabulously early last week and it's given back some. But it's, it, it's actually... It's acting quite well, and a lot's going to depend on the on the crude oil. So then the next question was, uh, so where, what, what, am, what am I looking at in crude oil? I'm just saying, shorter term, you can go chop, chop, chop. You can treat it as trades. At this point, I don't see anything until crude oil itself trading at uh, 48.19. The way this pattern is, 
it has no choice. It has to not only bounce over, but it has to close about 49.42. Soon as it does that, 49.88 is the comparable USO price, and this is at 49.88, the 200 period exponential moving average. A break into the 51s at any point in the next two weeks has two, two connotations. One is it says maybe the dollar will not rally strongly, and it also says that it's going to help enough of the multinationals to help the Dow stabilize and, and to push higher. Um, so we're just going to watch this closely. At the same time, if you're looking at, um, so I, I did that with the weekly chart. I did RRC and I did, okay, CON is the next question, C-O-N-N. -N. I don't know what this is, um, but it's gone to a leg D in the monthly chart. It's gone to a leg C, brand new C in the weekly over the 200 period moving average, the nine period moving average is just about across the 200 period. That's always good. And then you've got to be a little bit careful. But if I'm looking at this correctly, C-O-N-N, -N, Inc. is C-O-N-N, -N, Inc. Just quickly Google it. Uh, appliances, saving appliances. No, is that right? Yeah, search, Con Inc. Manufacturer of various brands of brass instruments and distributor of imported woodwinds. Oh, no, 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 that's Con Selma and Con. Yeah, those are in the music business, I know that very well. No, 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 we're talking about appliances. Canadian weed stocks, Canadian millionaire. What are we doing? Furniture and decor. Furniture, maybe. Someone help me. Help, help. Con furniture, Con Inc., Con Inc., Con welding industries. I have no idea. It's in, maybe it's in the retail area. Con rents TVs, good name for them. <laughs> okay, con. Um, yeah, amazing move. Oh, because everybody's going to need a TV down there who lost it. So maybe that's what we're looking at. Oh, all I can say is it broke to a new recovery high. MACD's got a squash with a stochastic at, 20, at 23.90. It's very good action up 45 cents. The 21.39 is the nine period moving average. It's a very strong support. I like it. Um, I would not want to buy it here in leg B in a new move to the upside, only because my suspicion is that it will do a little bit of a testing of the 2250s to 22 area. So I would say if it pulls back in the next two days to the 22.30, it's at 23.90. That's a dollar and something. What's going to make it do that? All right. Well, if it does that, that's where I would start a position because it's looking very strong in the weekly. It's looking very strong in the daily, and the monthly has improved a lot. So, yes, I do like it. Um, next question. Oh, appliance retail. He even said so. Sorry, Bob, you wrote it down, and I just I did it so quickly when I was looking across. Um, yeah, so the VIX. Look at the VIX. And believe me, it is still an indicator. It's trading at 10.73. It is not at all-time lows. The market is markets are at all-time highs, many of them. But 8.84 was the low. It's trading at 10.73, two points on $8.84. I would say that that's a good 28%, uh, right? Something like that. This is it's it's way higher, and I suspect that we're getting to an area that's going to be a real test for the sustainability of the market and the sustainability of the VIX staying at 10.73 if the market goes higher. Because if it goes higher, this VIX will stop rallying. It'll quickly drop to the nines. But in the meantime, it's telling us, all right, there's still some nervousness out there. I have to tell you, the way this market has moved, it, it's very impressive. It's just you have to look at it and say, congratulations. Very good move. Um, our next question was, oh, TLT. So this is my thinking here. TLT is trading at 126.80. My contention was that the TLT would rally strongly if the market took another leg down to the downside, broke that 21,600 area. Hey, wait a minute. We're under 127. We're in the, channel, the up channel. We're in the inside track Chapman Wave support zone. If the TLT breaks under 126.20, I'm going to make it 126. I need more proof. Breaks under 126. I think we are looking at this market having the potential to go higher. Now, this is going to be very important. Look, if I go to RTN, which is um, A, B, C, this is Raytheon. Everything about it says that it's recycled higher. 
And I have to put this into the perspective of what on earth? Wasn't Raytheon supposed to go down now that we've got a president that uh, um, spoke about military action? Well, it turns out that he, he speaking about military action, but Raytheon, uh, GD, General Dynamics, and Lockheed Martin, all defense stocks are near their highs. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge heard here at TFNN.com. All right, so this is what we want to do. I've got a, a slew of questions here. Uh, Goldman Sachs, so let me, uh, and, and TLT. Paul says the TLT suggests that we're going to go down sharply and he doesn't trust the whole iPhone thing. Yeah, I, I, I think Apple, I'm going to watch it closely because Apple looks like it wants to pull back, but they have a way of massaging numbers. But look at the TLT. Uh, look at the T bond, 30 year T bond. Here's that arch formation having a nice bounce off trough to make trough C, a trough C in the 10 year T note yield and trough C in the five year T note yield. Um, there's no guarantee that it's going to go down to a D, but usually they do. Uh, no, I should say they usually do before there's a big bounce. So uh, we'll see if they get to uh, what happens here. But I do think that if you're looking at yields, I think yields are going to rally, but TLT is going to be pulling back. Money will come out of the safety of bonds again and go back into stocks. This is kind of what I'm thinking shorter term. Leg E and Wood, the iShares, Global Timber and Forestry ETF. Nice rebound in the HGX for the Delphi Housing Index, trying to make a cup formation. So that's all good news. Um, I I want to just go back to that. So if you look at the dollar XAU, here's the XAU. 
pulling back after a peak D, no big deal yet. But I can tell you at 80, 89.91, if the XCU at any point this week slides underneath 88, I think we're going to get a bigger pullback in gold, and it's going to help the uh, um, the dollar to try to rally. No big deal, but try to rally. And if you look at the US. DJPY, I think I was cut off before when I was talking about it. Look, that's a very nice leg, A to the upside. My weekly chart says, hey, nice big deal. It's done this before until it gets into the 1130s. Uh, this is just another one of those little bounces. But that's what I'm looking at. Um, so, and there's the question is, okay, Goldman Sachs, GS, nice move to the upside of five points today. Um, the, the whole uh, the sector is doing very well. XLF, and let's look at KRE. Um, yeah, XLF is up 0.28. Um, KRE, which is the regionals, up. Oh, even more, up 2.29 percent. Yeah, I like I like the financials on the shorter term. I think we're going to rally. Did you get to? I thought I got to all the oh, IWM as we go out. The Russell 2000, nice leg being to the upside, folks. I'll be back with Tom later on today. Have a great day. Otherwise, I'll see you tomorrow. It's great to be back on the air. And uh, hey, check out my opening call. I hope you find it beneficial. Tom O'Brien has just announced that he'll be coming to Boston September 30th for a free workshop, The Art of Timing the Trade. Join Tom O'Brien Saturday morning, September 30th at the Boston Marriott in Burlington, Massachusetts as he breaks down his trading methodology and provides you with the tools to become a more successful and profitable trader. Everyone that attends in person will receive a free signed copy of Tom's best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System. Daryl Martin from Apex Investing Institute will also be presenting for 90 minutes at this free event. Hi folks, this is Tom O'Brien. Join me in Boston on September 30th as I return to my hometown for a workshop about the art of timing the trade. I look forward to seeing all the tigers and tigresses for this special free event. All action starts early at 7.30 a.m. with a continental breakfast and wraps up at about 1 p.m. Topics that Tom will be covering during his presentation include quality volume, cause and effect, ABC structures, swing points, and much, much more. For all the information on this free Boston event taking place Saturday, September 30th, visit the front page of TFNN.com.